we're back on this Wellness Wednesday and our doctors are making house calls. They've stayed with us to answer more health and wellness questions. Please welcome back Dr. Vlad Simeonu from Virginia Mason, Dr. Ann Reardon from ASFAST, and Dr. Tigran from Smiling Heart Dentistry. Thank you all for staying here. Yeah. Um, so back to the colonoscopy, our favorite subject today. Uh, are there tips and tricks for getting through the prep period, that, which is really what everybody dreads. It's not the procedure, it's the prep. Yeah, so, um, so there's a number of different preps you can use, but all of them, the effect is to get you pretty dehydrated, mm -hmm. um, taking all that fluid out of your colon. So anything you can do to stay hydrated, a lot of those symptoms of nausea um, come from being dehydrated. Drinking lots of liquids the day or so before, we'll drinking help. a Gatorade or a Powerade as you're doing the prep. Is there anything you can, like a chaser? <laughs> Because this stuff does not taste great. Yeah, like a tequila shot. No. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. that's the colonoscopy no. I want. <laughs> um, I, you know, I've heard different things from different people. Something sweet, something sour. Some the people lemon said, wedge, something. Yeah, or an orange or something like that. Whatever kind of, if it's certainly not going to hurt the, the colonoscopy. Okay. Right. Um, so let's talk about at-home tests. I mentioned to, this to you during our earlier segment. Yeah. I see a lot of advertisement for these tests that say, hey, you don't need a colonoscopy. You can just get this at-home test. Um, what's your thought on that? Um, so if you got a bunch of doctors in a room, they would have a big scientific debate about the merits of one or another. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, what's important for us as doctors is that the patient gets screened somehow. So whatever it is that they are willing to be compliant with, um, like you said, there are stool-based tests, tests that uh, look for DNA or blood in the stool. There's the colonoscopy. There's even fancy x-rays that will look for things. And so it's important as long as you get one of them done. The, the colonoscopy is the one that can find the polyps and treat them at the same at time. At the same time. So a lot of us prefer that. What are you going to do? I'm going to do a colonoscopy. Okay. <laughs> that, see, that, this makes a difference. Um, there's a little bit of research out that vitamin D might help reduce mm -hmm. the risk of, of colon cancer, is this right? Yeah, so, there, so there's new evidence that um, that, that will probably help. Um, and this falls into that same category of things we talked about. There's some things that we, we would like to try to control at lowering our risk of cancer. The diet, the exercise, vitamin D, it certainly won't hurt and it might help. We all need, I, I think pretty much we're chronically vitamin D deprived around yeah. here anyway, so it can't hurt. Dr. Reardon, winter skin, we have, I don't know what it is about the winter, but we have dry skin. Some people, I have eczema sometimes. Right. Hard to know which one you have. What is your thought about treating that? Well, um, a lot of people have problems with dry skin, especially in the fall and winter, as we've talked about in the past, just because we have the dry cold air outside and the dry heat inside. Nobody ever drinks enough fluids. Right, um, so my yes, <laughs> water would be right. good. <laughs> um, so my recommendation really is for people to um, use fragrance-free products, that things that don't have a lot of perfumes and preservatives. Don't irritate what's already irritated. Exactly, um, to use soaps um, that don't have a lot of fragrance in them, because um, that can irritate and aggravate the skin and also Perfumes can also cause the skin to become more dry. I am not giving up my Chanel number five, <laughs> but I'll do these other things. I will do these other things. Uh, is there an order these products go? Oh, you know what? I'm going to skip that question. The thing that I want to ask you about are the increasing rates of skin cancer among young people. We touched, you know, young people in this segment as well. But this is surprising to me. Why is this happening? It's an excellent question, that, and great that you brought it up because in my practice, and I've been in private practice now for over 25 years, it's amazing to me. That the skyrocketing incidence of skin cancer, particularly in young people that I've seen in the last five years. Well, what's up? Are we not wearing our SPF? I think I think part of it is, you know, the, the continued use of tanning beds a lot in a lot of the younger population. Um, you know, they're in health clubs and things like that. It's, you know, people want to, you know, tan means healthy, so they want to look healthy. So, and also the universal concept by youth is that we're going to live forever, so that's yeah, not going to happen sure. to me. The other thing that I think is also our lack of ozone as well. Um, we don't have as much ozone layer as we used to have, say, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Um, and we don't have that, that as much now. So I think that has made a big impact with a lot of the intensity of the sun rays that we do get. Um, but I see at least two or three cases a year of college students with skin cancers, including melanoma, which wow. I never saw before. Please, please wear your SPF out there and you, you know, we all are the same. We are going to get an accumulation of sunshine. And exactly, it's over a, a lifetime. Um, Dr. Tigran, one implant concern that people have is that the teeth aren't going to fit in their mouth. 
you know, they're worried about this. We've all seen somebody who's had some of this work done and maybe have more teeth than mouth. And oh, of course. <laughs> what do you do to, to control this? So there's many ways to measure uh, the proportions of your teeth. So one of the devices is, uh, for example, this device. Uh, because your, your, uh, <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> your teeth are proportional to your face. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you take your uh, upper central tooth and turn it upside down, multiply it by 16, it's going to be about the same size as your face. What? So this That's cool math. Yes, so this device, uh, all you do is put it on your face, mm -hmm. and it will give you the numbers, uh, the measurements of your teeth. So that's one way to measure it. There's golden, golden proportions that you also um, take into consideration, including how your jaw, uh, a lower and upper jaw should be. So, yes. Those. What are some of the conditions <coughs> that bring people to you? I mean, what happens that ends up with a need for implants? So many times uh, people didn't take care of their teeth uh, or the dentistry before was not the best. Uh, periodontitis is another factor. Mm -hmm. uh, accidents is another factor. Yeah. Um, Which can happen to kids in sports or any other thing. Yeah. And people are a little <coughs> worried about the pain involved, you know, what this is going to feel like. What can you tell us about that? So with the technology we use, uh, our surgeries are much less invasive because when we fabricate a surgical guide, we don't have to cut the gums open and then find where the bone is and place it. All we do is place the surgical, uh, surgical guide in and putting the implant through the uh, tiny hole. So the healing time is much faster, and we also use stem cells from your blood and the uh, growth factors from your, your blood. We put it in the surgical site, and the healing is so much faster wow. and less dramatic. So, so let's say you're not an implant uh, candidate, but you feel like you have some tooth alignment issue that causes headaches or pain in the jaw. Talk about that a little bit. So yes, nowadays we have so many m people with migraines, and people unfortunately don't understand that about 88% of the migraines come from the muscles of the head and neck. And so in our clinic, not only we, we align your teeth to look beautiful, to uh, make sure your airway is open, but also your, your muscles are in, the, are in their relaxed stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I have so many cases that people had migraines all their life, and they didn't know where, where it was coming from. And within two weeks of special orthotic wearing, uh, their mi migraine went down from 10 to 2. That is actually pretty amazing, yeah. and I know a lot of people suffer from yeah. migraines and are looking for just yeah. about anything that will make that better. Thank you all very much for your expertise Thank today you. and your help. Thank you. There is more New Day right after this.